very good morning, a very happy Easter. Um, it's wonderful to have you all here and gathered as we worship and celebrate the risen Christ and say, the Lord has risen, which, which has risen indeed. Let's try that because that's practice for what's going to come soon. So the Lord has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. So very happy Easter, and again, welcome. You might wonder why I'm down here. I will make my way up. This seemed less hazardous to start down here. Um, if you're visiting with us, we would welcome you to fill out a little uh, envelope that is in your uh, pew aisle and leave us your email or your address. We'd love to be in touch. Um, if you are watching and worshiping with us at home on Facebook or YouTube, welcome to Calvary, and we're glad that you've chosen to be with us. Uh, just a couple announcements before we begin. We thank those who have donated um, and dedicated these beautiful lilies uh, on the purple lilac insert. Uh, you're welcome to take your lilies home after the service. And uh, as always, we do usually have a few extra lilies. So if you'd like one, just let me know. You're welcome to take one home once everybody has taken their lily um, and share that with somebody you know. Uh, just a couple other announcements before we begin our worship. Um, as noted within our bulletin, we will be enjoying another evening of dining with friends, a time to get together and enjoy in fellowship and in good food. That's April 18th. You can talk to Sam or Sharon if you're interested. Um, also, speaking of food, we are excited to be um, doing a fundraiser, a taco lunch fundraiser. So, as many of you know, we raise, um, we go over to the Lehigh Conference of Churches Soup Kitchen twice a month and we'll actually be there this Thursday, but it's usually the second and the fourth Mondays of the month. Every second and fourth Mondays, we serve tacos. We don't know how to make anything else. Um, it's been about a year, right, that we've been doing this, and we've done tacos twice a month. So we're very excited for this outreach. We serve over 100 hungry guests. Um, if you'd ever want to be part of this, just let me know. We definitely have room for more volunteers. But on April 30th after church, we're going to be serving what we serve over at the Conference of Churches Soup Kitchen here as a fundraiser for that outreach. So join us on those that day as well. Uh, please take some time to look through the other announcements that are in our bulletin. Um, we'd love to have you join us anytime. I also want to say a word of thanks to our guest organist, Eric, Eric Jorgensen. Thank you for being here. We're so gratified. Thank you to the choir, all between me. Thank you. Um, and we're very excited to have you back and uh, part of this service. So as I call us to worship, I want to share our daily text that is for today, Easter Sunday. Taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 1. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us worship the risen Christ together. Please stand, join with me in our Easter liturgy, page 90. 
The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Sing this aloud. Proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, we are given new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Praise, honor, glory, and power to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Jesus was handed over to death for our sins and was raised to death for our justification. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship, can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. be seated. We have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a breath like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, it is for the Lord that we live, and if we die, it is for the Lord that we die. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord, for Christ died, rose from death, and lives again in order to be Lord of the living and of the dead. We do not want you to be in any doubt about those who have died or to grieve over them as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. What we are saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. What is sown, sown as perishable is raised imperishable. What is sown in dishonor is raised in glory. What is sown in weakness is raised in power. What is sown a physical body is raised a spiritual body. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are of the earth. For we have died, and our lives are hidden with Christ in God. God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Make us complete in everything good, so that we may do your will, working among us all that is pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Again, part of our community of faith, our community of Christ, is bearing each other, bearing each other in burdens and suffering, bearing with each other in times of celebration. Um, and so we come together in these community prayers each Sunday um, to ask if we can pray for each other and if we can turn our prayers over to the one who hears all uh, to our Lord. So are there prayers, and I'll, I'll hear you even though I'm up here, so. <laughs> Rick? Uh, just prayers for all our families that are near and far. Thank you. So prayers for all families near and far, and certainly extend that to those who are traveling and um, those who are uh, not able to be here, some of which are worshiping at home, but many of our members that Josh and I got to saw, see this week uh, who are, are more homebound. So we're thinking of all of you. Yeah, I was going to announce the so prayers for Nancy um, uh, facing a loss of her grandson very unexpectedly this week. So we're praying for Ezekiel's uh, parents, S Samantha and Mike, and also for Nancy. Thank you. Alan? Yes. <laughs> With gratitude for the beautiful day. Um, and Karen? Wonderful. Yes. Well, prayers of celebration, prayers for Sally, you said? Okay. Sally, a co worker for healing. Thank you. Um, Blair and Warren will be thinking about you as you travel. Prayers of sympathy for the loss of your mother, uh, Marion. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thursday is the memorial service, so we'll be thinking of you as you travel down to North Carolina. Um, also, yes, yeah, I was gonna, no, it's, go ahead if you want. Uh, first for uh, the Stewart family, my best friend's brother died suddenly this week, trout fishing, fell in the river and um, it sent me proofs of why young, young, relatively young man, um, so just a tremendous loss, shock to the whole family and his close friends. So, be praying for the family of Scott Stewart, um, Terry and Bonnie and Michael and Amy. Oh, thanks. Any others? Well, again, my prayers of thanksgiving that we can be church here, uh, holding each other up, um, that through these holy weeks, all of the um, behind the scene energies of uh, many ushers and sacristans and our secretary and all and our choir. So thank you all for uh, what you all do and uh, making this possible. Let's come together with a word of prayer. Risen Lord, thank you for the day that you have made. Some days that those words are easier to say than others. And maybe, Lord, we find ourselves here with spirits still not yet risen, feeling lost or unsure or empty as that tomb. Maybe we find ourselves celebrating and grateful for the ways that you have worked within our lives. Or maybe like the women that have come to the tomb, we find ourselves with conflicting emotions, with fear and joy, with ways that we can't quite figure out this thing we call life. But wherever we come from, Lord, bring us here to worship, to thank you in our many forms of hallelujah. Even if they be broken, Lord, work through them. Be with those who grieve and those who are ill. Be with those who celebrate and those who have found release. Be with us all, Lord as we are reminded today of all days that there is hope and there is your presence despite it all. Lord Jesus, you followed your father's lead 
as you loved and taught and lived among us. Grateful for your life, we turn now to pray the prayer that you taught your disciples as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. As God has so richly blessed us, we come to that point in worship where we come together as a community to return a portion of that blessing to the ministry and mission here at Calvary Moravian.
If you'll stand and it's 819 in your book in the book of worship. At this point, there's a delay. <laughs> At this point in our worship, we usually ask our children to come forward and we take up what we call our joyful noise offering. And I saw the one that's usually excited about this. She ran away. Do I have any volunteers to help? No? <laughs> you can be young at heart as well. Our first scripture reading comes to us from the gospel according to Matthew. You can find this on page 811 in your pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was drawing, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he had said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, 
He has been risen from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Acts. This is Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. And here, if you'd like to follow along, is on page 895 in your pew Bible. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All prophets testify, testify about him that anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Thank you, Josh. So if you're like me, you might hear the words, go, 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 or feel like your life is in constantly that state of pattern. Go, going here, going there. Maybe if you're working, maybe if you're a parent, uh, maybe if you're a parent that really becomes a taxi cab driver, uh, this might apply to you more, but I really think this applies to most of us in our lifestyles, working or retired students or parents, caregivers or volunteers, it seems like our days are filled with movement, going from here to there. We come one place and we say, look at our watch or our phone and say, I've got to go. I've got to get to a doctor's appointment or a meeting, pick up a child, or just get somewhere before the dreaded Route 22 traffic creeps up which who knows when that is. <laughs> Sometimes I find myself consumed though with going, going here, going there, going there. And lest I forget now, of course, we have the cell phone alarms. So my cell phone calendar, I set up sometimes to remind me to go somewhere. And I haven't quite figured out, I'm sure it's easy to do, but how to change the alarm because every time my cell phone alarm goes off in my calendar, it has this kind of outer spacey sound. Um, and it's very ethereal. It sounds kind of like I should be blasting off somewhere, but that's my, my go reminder. Sometimes even when we're going, and it's okay to admit it, we go somewhere and we forget why we got there, right? So that might have happened. Hopefully we haven't forgotten to pick somebody up a child once we've gotten there, but still, lots of going. It's remarkable to think that three years ago, just around this time, our life, and for many of us, our go, 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 go life skidded to a sudden halt, right, when the COVID-19 lockdown, COVID lockdowns began. 
for many of us, it was dramatic. It was a 180 degree turn of what was normal, um, what was expected. For some of us though, as we got into that time and even in this dark and fearful and strange time, we admit that maybe we'd like to stop a little bit on some of the parts of life that were always going, um, but we know it wasn't gonna last and I don't think it did last. I think we are back um, in some parts of going. On a bigger level though, on a level around our country, it seems like as we look at statistics, Americans move a lot, they go a lot, not only on an everyday errand basis, but 10% of all people in America have moved within the last year. And according to some statistics, we will move t over 10 times in our lifetime. So going, whether or not it's for us, our kids, our activities, or on a more national scale, seems to be part of what we do. If we think about who we are now, and we think 2,000 years ago to the gospel reading that we hear, we think that maybe in the first century Palestine, maybe in that world of the Roman government and the dusty roads and the Jewish peasants or laborers, that life was simpler. Life wasn't so much about going. Life was within um, those small communities. There were less choices. People stayed put. And we probably would be correct in part. Uh, maybe we even see and look back in that time, see a kind of utopian vision of maybe tending some sheep on a hillside um, and staying. But when we read the gospel stories, it's not the words that I hear. The gospels, the stories that we have about Jesus are largely, I think, stories of movement, stories of going. And if I just looked in Matthew's gospel that we heard this morning, if we just take it from the beginning of Matthew's gospel, don't worry, I'm not gonna read 28 chapters, you'll be home. But if we just look in the beginning of Matthew's gospel, I would argue that Jesus is telling his disciples and telling others throughout the courses of these pages to go, to do, to go. It starts in the very beginning, even before Jesus was born as Joseph is told that his wife Mary is expecting a child and what is he told by the angel? He says, go, go, don't be afraid, take her as your wife. The wise men that come in Matthew's version to seek the child are told again, go and seek this child. And the child Jesus grows up and Jesus calls his first disciples with a word or words, come and see, and then, Quickly after, very early on in Matthew's gospel, he tells those disciples to go and teach. Go, teach others about what I've taught you. Heal, love, be my presence in a hurting world. Go off. And we hear them sent off to Galilee, to the places around where Jesus grew up, his neighborhood, we might say. We hear them sent off to Samaria not Jesus' neighborhood, the enemy territory, the places he didn't want to go to, and even to the ends of the earth. So movements of going throughout Jesus' ministry. We hear travels and it's sometimes interesting to look at the gospels about how Jesus travels so much from northern parts of uh, Israel and Galilee down to Jerusalem, going from the rural areas to the cities, going from towns that are known to towns that, are, that have outcast, going, going, leaving family behind sometimes, even having to leave his disciples as he walks finally on that Good Friday going to face his end, the cross. But he is not, he is risen. And here of all days on Easter Sunday, it seems fitting to stay put, to not go, to be at the empty tomb, to be marveling at the wonder of the risen Christ, to embrace the presence of Christ as, it's, as he's come to the woman that gather there. But not so. We heard the word again in the gospel readings that we heard Josh read for us. The woman seeing Jesus isn't there at that empty tomb and hearing a confirmation from the angel are given these instructions. And the words are, then go, go quickly, tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee, there you will see him. And it's interesting when you have 
the woman here, and you have these guards that in Matthew's version are set to make sure that no one's gonna steal Jesus's body and pretend that he has been raised. The women have a choice. The women can stay put. And we see it described that the guards did stay put. They become like dead men because of the fear of all things, an empty tomb, an angel talking to them. Oh my gosh, they stay put. But that's not what the gospel tells us to do and not what the focus of it is here. Go as the women do. Go and take this choice to tell others of the events of this, this great day. So they do, they go and we hear those conflicting emotions that they have. That's interesting to think about how we don't always have to go with this confidence and great joy, but they go with joy and in fear, with joy and in fear, but they manage to find the strength to bring the events of the risen Christ to action. Telling and listening to Jesus's command, do not be afraid, go and tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. So Matthew's version of our resurrection story of, in fact, Matthew's entire gospel ends with this chapter. Matthew's version of the resurrection ends rather quickly. There are no other post-resurrection accounts like we have in the other gospels. So there's no walks along the seashore with Jesus and the disciples. There's no eating fish with Jesus as a earthly presence. There's no appearance along the road to Emmaus. They're simply the command to go. And since we won't be back in Matthew's gospel in the next few weeks, um, we'll read some other accounts. Let's hear how it turns out for the woman that we didn't hear. As we heard, the women do listen to the angel and they do listen to Jesus. They embrace him, but then they do let go and they go off to tell others about what they have seen. And when they do, in fact, find the disciples, the disciples, we hear it later in verse um, 17, the disciples see Jesus. They worship him, even though some doubted. And then Jesus came to the, them, these are the disciples, and he said these words, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the ends of the age. So again, those last two verses, the word is again, Jesus telling his disciples in those last words to go, to move. But here's the significant thing, and maybe how it differs from our constant lives of movement of going. He tells the disciples to move, but with intentionality, with purpose, not for the sake of busyness or trying to fulfill all of these things that you have going on in your day, but with a directed purpose. And that purpose, why should we go? Why should they go? He says these words, go and make disciples, teach others what I have commanded you. What did Jesus command them? We turn back a few chapters, Matthew 22, and we hear the words of the greatest commandment, the words that Jesus says all of the law should hinge on. Everything we do should be centered in this greatest commandment, Matthew 22, verse 34, to love God as we love our neighbors as ourselves. The greatest commandment is to love, to love the Lord our God, to love each other, and to love ourselves. And I think here's the crucial detail that we have to connect to our going, to our movement, to our being sent off. Jesus's condition for all times as he sends us off to go, as he sends the disciples off, as he sends the woman off, he does so with a purpose. Knowing that maybe we are all bound to move, to do something, to wanna be active, to wanna to find purpose in our lives, thirsty for opportunities, so he connects that natural going movement with this purpose that whenever you go, do it with my greatest command to love, to love each other, to love our Lord, our God, to love yourself and care for yourself. And maybe he could say, as we head off tomorrow to do an errand, as we head somewhere, to let your errands from the most mundane to the most important 
to be centered in this opportunity to love. And so maybe today we can find a little ways to find out how could this be possible? Or maybe as your cell phone alarm goes off, you think, well, what will that make me do in love? How can I carry out this in love? I don't know, going to the dentist? Is there somebody who's looking a little more nervous than you? And maybe just a smile or just changing the subject away from being in the dentist office can be a way to find yourself in love. Going to the store, we know, at least I know, that dreaded self-checkout line of the giant. Is there a way to go through that with a little bit more love for the kind people that help me when it always seems to be blinking uh, light? Can we go to visit someone and can we be fully present in the present to love someone as they're talking to us rather than to make a list of what we have to do or where we go next or just how to end the conversation? Can we go and live with intentionality to love in the actions of our day, whatever they are? I was reading the late Reverend Peter Gomes, who served as Harvard University's chaplain and minister, as he's writing in his Easter sermon again about these women at the empty tomb and remarking about how they began to see how life began in their going when they're given the good news. And here's what he had to say as we end. He writes, life begins when we are able to take hold of what we have been given and to go with it, run with it. Life begins, he writes, with fear and joy, those emotions that the woman correctly come to the empty tomb with upon seeing Jesus, this odd couple of human existence that enables us to get on with the serious and glorious business of living and of loving. Life begins for Easter Christians when we realize we do not have to die to live. You can begin it right now, right here. You don't have to have an after-death experience. You can live life while you're still alive. And finally, he writes, life begins when you run with what you have, or I would say when you go with that purpose, when you run with what you have been given and in the time that you have been given today. So rather than thinking I'm gonna change all of our lifestyles to be staying put, quietly meditating in our rooms, we should do that too. But when we're going, wherever we're going, go the way that the risen Christ has commanded us with the greatest commandment to love in all things. Amen. As we get to our, our final hymn, I just wanted to say a word of thanks. Um, this has been sitting on our, our lower pulpit for um, 40 some days since Ash Wednesday. Uh, so thanks to Jeff for uh, leading us in an exercise we do every Ash Wednesday of um, taking what we would like to give over to God, maybe what has been keeping us from God, taking that outside on Ash Wednesday evening and burning that and he gathers the ashes for us, um, and we've had that as a reminder throughout the season of Lent of those things that we have removed symbolically from our lives or trying to work on removing to get closer to God. Um, he's going to take this out after the service and spread it uh, before the empty tomb. And again, as a way to think of those things that we have taken over, it doesn't stop or just in the season of Lent, but we keep on working on the things that we're trying to let go of in order to get closer now to the risen Christ. So thank you. Um, and with that, if we can stand um, as we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today, 358.
and go now with the spirit of the risen Christ still within your hearts to guide your way. Go now knowing the truth of this day that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.